Oh, hallelujah. Welcome to Barack Christian Church on this first Sunday morning of September. And we are here to bless the name of the Lord. Why don't you stand to your feet or wherever you are to just welcome and invite the holy presence of the Lord into your home. As we are here live streaming for you this morning, we apologize, had a few technical difficulties, but the devil is alive. The word of God shall go forth. Amen. How many are excited just to be able to tell your God that you love him, that you praise him, that you adore him, that you magnify him? Now, that's what we came to do on this blessed Sunday, this blessed day that the Lord has seen fit to rise us up out of our beds, to give us a piece of our right mind, clothed and shield. We have a right and we have a right and an honor to praise the God that we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Our invocation, Father God, in the name of Christ Jesus, Lord, we praise you, we honor you, we magnify you. We thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Now, God, we yield ourselves to you, and we invite and invoke the presence of your Holy presence into this place. God, we ask that you move, that your anointing falls fresh like dew in the morning. God, we're giving you free reign to take over and take residence in this place. Heal, see, set free, and deliver your people on this day. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, and have your way in this place. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading will be given by Sister Tamiko Tucker, and then we will turn it over to our music ministry. Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Go with me to the word of the Lord. Please, please stand for the reading of the word. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two, when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listening, if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be com confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I will I will there among them. I am there among them. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord,
amongst us. Let me say that again. Your name is being proclaimed. So God, we thank you this day for your holy presence among us, God. Not just, not just far, far beyond us, but walking among us, living in our bodies, living between us, holding up the earth that we stand on, giving us air to breathe, food to eat, and clothes on our back. God, we proclaim your mighty, wondrous nature on this very day, God. We can't even begin, or we can't begin to pray without even just stopping and feeling you inside our heart, God. That knowing that you are there, that when a mouth gets open to praise your holy and righteous name, we know that you are speaking among us, God. So God, touch my voice and lift up my voice as I pray for your people, God. I'm calling on you, God, to touch us on this very day, God, because we need a mighty correction among us, God. We call, we call out your mighty, your mighty wisdom and your might to change this world, God. We're asking for a mighty change in each and every one of us, God. God, we have forgotten to even, we've forgotten even to, to be able to feel one another in our bodies, God. To know that the one who's standing next to us is our brother and sister, God. So I'm asking you to correct that in us, God. 
I'm asking you to correct it in us, guys, where, where we would rather choose hatred and greed and evil over, over community and love and, and, and brother and sistership with one another, God. I'm asking for forgiveness of that right now, God. I'm asking, God, where we, instead of if we forget to turn to you when, when, times, when times get rough, when, when times are good, we forget your name, but when times get rough, God, we want to call out to you. God, I'm asking that you correct that and put a, put a continuous spirit in us, God, a continuous hope, a continuous praise, a continuous worship, a continuous reverence, a continuous awe, a continuous love in our hearts, for, first of all, for you, and let that spill over, God. Not to, we, don't want to just, we don't want to just project it out to heaven. We want to project the, the love that you have for us out to our brothers and sisters, God. We need, we need a mighty and righteous change, God, because too often we want to turn on one another, not just with words, with sticks and with bullets, God. We want to, instead of turning against us to eat one another, God, we're praying for you to put, put, your, put yourself in the midst, God. Just like you came down in Jesus' form, come down and put your Holy Spirit on us, God, and turn, and turn, us, from our, turn us from our wicked ways. God, we have an election coming up, God, and I'm praying, I'm praying for all of us to, to, to look deep inside our hearts, to, to push a button, that, to push a button that not just for our, entry, our, our selfish interests, but for our collective interests. For, for to, eat, to, to, to vote as if we're voting for the weakest, the weakest and most maligned among us, God. We have to do better as a society, God. It starts with each and every one of us claiming the, claiming the authority that you have given us to act in your name. To, to, to reach out and heal and hope and, 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 and feed and clothe the ones who need, who need to, be seen, to, to be fed. God, I'm, I'm praying for all the, I'm praying for everybody under the sound of my voice, God. I'm praying for every place where your name is proclaimed, God. Where people need a healing, God, God, I proclaim a healing over them right now, God. If there's, if there's illness in the mind, God, I'm proclaiming the correction of mental illness, God. I'm going to also say it, too. There ain't nothing wrong with having a therapist as well as calling out your name. Because if we need that help, we need to go get it. God, I'm praying for, I'm praying for shelter over people's, over people's houses, God. I, I, know, I know, God, that in, when times are tough and, 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 and there's a foreclosure crisis, God, we need your name more. We need to cry out your name more than anything, God, to put, put shelter over our, our people's, people's home, food on their table, God, blows over their backs, God, and put a correction in our heart, God, that we shouldn't, have, we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be tolerating this for anybody. Nobody should be going without food. Nobody should be going without shelter. Nobody should be going without clothes, God. In the richest nation in the world, that should never happen. So we need a spiritual correction, God. Not just a legal or political correction. We need a spiritual correction, God, to correct this, correct this, correct this evil in our hearts, God, where we think one, one person is better than another, that one person's needs, aren't, the, the, other, the other person's needs aren't holy. Because, they, because in truth, God, the ones who are suffering, that's where you are. And, we, and when we do right, and when we do right, when we heal ills, when we, when we take care of one another, God, there you are in our midst, God. So I'm praying, I'm praying, God, for that holy and righteous correction, God. I'm praying for all the ones who proclaim your name. I'm going to start with Reverend Dr. Lynn and Reverend Dr. Stacy Mim, the, the angels of this house. God, in the midst of a pandemic, they have stayed faithful. I'm asking God you continue to protect them, God, to, 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 to bolster up their hearts, God, to fill their spirits when it, when it looks like things are tough, when things look like going like they're rough, when the ties ain't coming in right, when the, build, when the building is act, when ain't acting right, when, people, when they feel, when they feel the, the, the congregation's soul and they know something is wrong. God, put a mighty and righteous prayer spirit in them, God. But move their feet, God. I'm not asking just for them, God. I'm asking for everybody under the sound of my voice. Put, put some fire in our bodies, God. Move our feet, God. Correct our minds, God. Put right, right and righteous words in our mouths, God. Move us in the direction that you would have us to be. And God, if I, if I forgot anything... You know my heart. You know I'm praying hard for your people, God. Come on and listen, God. Do you do what you do, God? And if I in, in, in Jesus' mighty righteous name, don't ever let me forget take Jesus' name out of my mouth. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, I pray. Amen.
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We thank Reverend Darrell for that awesome pastoral prayer. And if you are in agreement, why don't you say amen? Amen. It's also oh, awesome to have a powerful warrior go before the throne of grace for you. Amen. Even when you can't even pray out for yourself, make sure you have an awesome prayer partner who can approach the throne of grace with power, boldness, and authority. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to take a moment to welcome our visitors on live stream audience since we're not in our public worship setting in the actual facility. So we just want to greet those that are on live stream with us on behalf of Dr. Lynn R. and Stacey A. Mims and the Barack Christian Church leadership and congregation. We just greet in the name of Christ Jesus, and we welcome you to continue to join us each and every Sunday morning on live stream as we still proclaim the word of God through a pandemic. And whenever this thing clears up, we will welcome you and greet you with a smile in person at our facility at 7370 North Hanley Road in Hazelwood, Missouri. And we just, again, welcome you, greet you, and welcome you to a believing church that believes in the Word of God, which is the transforming Word of God. So, Barack members, if you're online, just put a message in the uh, comment section to greet our visit in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to read our announcements for the week. Our announcements, please submit all church announcements to Barack Announce at att.net. The weekly deadline for announcements is every Monday at 5 p.m. All announcements will be reviewed, edited, and pre-approved before publishing. For more information, please contact Pastor Stacy. The prayer ministry, you are welcome to pray on the pr prayer conference line. Uh, that's every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., Please call 63, no, not 63, but 646 628 5010. The assets code is 982 4236. You do not have to be on the prayer team to pray. For more information, please contact Reverend Rosie Hall. The building use, please email all requests to reserve rooms to Reverend Sandra at sndr.jesse at gmail.com or fill out the building request form. The Bible study series. Join us for the 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Bible study classes during the month of September. Our focus will be on work out your own salvation. And I'm telling you, this is one of the Bible series that you definitely want to attend. Not that you shouldn't be attending Bible study anyhow, but if you're not, you definitely want to attend this one, working out your own salvation. It was awesome last week. So whether you can catch it at 10 a.m., which I'm starting to like the 10 a.m. Being at home, I'm starting to like that 10 a.m. Bible study. But if you can't catch it at 10 a.m. on the conference line, catch it at 7 p.m. on the Zoom. So make sure that you're in tune with the Word of God because your questions can't be answered on Sunday morning from the pulpit. But if you have questions and need further clarification, that's what you get that Bible study. So make sure you're in tune on Wednesday. And we ain't got no excuse saying that we just getting off work and we got to get home to feed the kids because we already at home. The majority of us are already at home. And even if you're not at home, it's so easy just to uh, call in that conference line, put yourself on mute, and you can still hear the word of God. So even through a pandemic, the word of God still has its way of penetrating our hearts. Amen. The Barack Recovery Support Program, addiction and recovery services are open to the public every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Services include references, spiritual counseling, group and or peer support, and care coordination. Uh, due to the COVID-19, telehealth and other media outlets are available. Please contact Dr. Lynn Mims, Director, or Reverend William Lemons, the Peer Recovery Support Specialist at 314-521-2243. Also, on behalf of the pastors, we just want to thank all the members that came out and helped yesterday with the COVID-19, and we are back open with our food ministry. Amen. There was just a heartbreaker last week when we knew 
that the USDA had stopped the program, but praise be to God that they decided to reinstate it. And I'm telling you, when when the righteous go into prayer, things change because we began to pray on that thing because we knew that there was still a need for food in the communities. There's still a drought in our communities. Even though the kids are back in school, either virtually or in person, there's still a need there. And we are just so thankful to God that he placed it on the hearts of our government officials to reinstate that program. So we are now reinstating our food giveaway every Saturday starting at noon. And this time, the uh, grant goes all the way through December the 19th. So make sure that if you know anyone who is in need, that you get them out here. If they can't make it, you come and get it for them. And Barack, we still are uh, asking our members, if you're not doing anything on Saturday, Come on up here and help with this. You will be so excited, and it gives you such a pleasure knowing that you're able to help and assist, working out your salvation. Also, faith without works is dead. So we still got work to do. Even though we're not gathered physically in this building, there is still work to be done. So we just, again, thank all of those who came out yesterday. The, the COVID-19 drive-up was a success. I mean, that line just kept flowing and flowing with people. And we all tell you, when it was 12 noon, we was hustling around here to make to get that food out there because them cars were lined up. And that lets you know that there is a need. And also because the Urban League has stopped their uh, weekly give out, so that's even a greater need. So we're going to be requesting additional uh, food uh, distribution, having enough food, because now we see that even bumping the food up that we did have still wasn't enough for the need that showed up on this Saturday. So we need our members to come out. You know, don't worry. Put your mask on. We all in gloves, and we six feet apart. So, and, I, and, and hey, we can do this. Because I only know a select few that's really been closed up in their homes since February. So we've been out in these streets. So we can come on into the house of the God on Saturday to be of service. I only know a few people who have honestly been locked up in their homes since February. We've been in these streets. So we can come out and be of service. Amen? Amen. Our second shut-in is Beatrice Dickey and Robert Grady. Amen. Make sure you keep them in prayer and give them a phone call. We're going to bring up Pastor Mills for our tithes and offering. I don't want to uh, belabor the time, but I do want to thank Pastor Stacy and Reverend Bryant for uh, making sure that we had the transportation and getting the food here and getting everything out there so when the workers and volunteers got here that we could be able to do what we do. And I want to welcome Taft back. Amen. Praise him. Amen. Uh, amen. That bearded friend of mine, he don't know how much we miss him, does he? <laughs> amen. <laughs> Amen. Also, uh, you know, as Reverend Bryant was saying, uh, I haven't seen some of you since February. And I know you're church members and you, are, you love us, but uh, amen. I don't see you in person and I don't see your giving. So I'm just praying, as you can see, by us having to do what we're doing in the community, uh, that van that we had to transport the food with yesterday, we had to pay for that. We had to pay for the air, heat, water, light, gas, and all that for the volunteers. They don't want to be working there hot. Amen. And if you don't come down, if you, if you don't come back or whatever, that's fine. But please send us your offering so we can have your presence through giving and serve the community. And we need you. We need you. You don't realize how much we need you. Amen. And by you not supporting us, uh, amen. It hurts the whole outreach of the church. And I want to thank those of you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for those of you who are still supporting the ministry and praying for us. And if you can't get out, there's two things you can do. Pray and give and serve where you are. I'm going to add that third one. Amen. So we're encouraging you this morning. We're going to be here. God's going to bless us to be here 
blessed to be a blessing. So we encourage you this morning to do what you can for the Lord your God. And amen. And you can give in several ways. You can give by cash app, which all you have to do is do dollar sign Barack Church. Or you can give by PayPal, which is Church at att.net. Or go to barackchristianchurch.org, then click the online giving tab and follow the instructions. You can give by Zelle, which is Church at att.net. Or you can give through Apple Pay, which you can dial on your text message, 314-522-4911. Of course, many of you come by and leave your offering, or you can mail your offering at or to 7370 North Hanley Road, Hazelwood, Missouri, 63042. Be safe. Be safe. Amen. And before I take my seat, I want to also lift up uh, Michelle Branch, who lost her brother this past Sunday evening, Craig Elazar. Michelle, we pray for you. We ask God to bless you, and we ask you to be safe. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Amen. Now, Father, thank you now for this offering as your people choose the direction that they're going to give, and we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. I want to thank you, everybody. But I'm going to tell you, yesterday, me and Pastor Mims got out there at 7 o'clock to go to pick up all that food, and this man was loading them boxes like he was my age. <laughs> Come through. I'm telling you, Dr. Mims was lifting them boxes, and I said, okay, now I got you, Doc. We're going to get this done. But I'm also encouraging, especially the men, not that he's not able, but our pastor is a... Uh, 72 years old. Thank you, Pastor Says He's 72, and he's out here lifting boxes like he's 30. So we got young men and we got middle-aged men that can get yourself on down here, and we shouldn't have to work our pastor to death like that. But he's willing and able to be a willing vessel of God. So come on out once again. Amen. And at this time, before we hear the preach word of God, from Dr. Lynn R. Mims, we're going to have another selection from the music ministry and then prepare your hearts and mind to be blessed by the transforming word of God. Amen. From 
the miry clay hey, Set my feet upon the rock And now I know I love you I need you Though my world may fall I'll never let you go My Savior My closest friend Lord, I'll worship you until the very end, until the very end. Jesus, the lover of my soul. Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from my reclaim. Set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. I love you, I need you, though my world may fall, I'll never let you go, my Savior, my closest friend, and Lord, I'll worship you until the very end, till the very end, on, oh, until the very end. so much. That was so beautiful. Uh, today is the uh, first Sunday, and you know, I want to ask you as we prepare for our sermon, if you would get your juice and bread and other elements, if you can't go to church today where you normally go and participate in the Lord's uh, Supper, Holy Communion, we are going to celebrate together, and you can celebrate where you are with me this morning. Man, I want to just uh, preach this morning, and I, I pray to God. I want to get through with this, but there's so much I can say about this sermon this morning. But I want to preach this morning from that text that was read 
by uh, uh, Tamiko. Amen. So thank you, Tamiko. Uh, I want to take verse 20, which I think summarizes the whole uh, text I'm preaching from Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. And there it says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there among them. Amen. And what I want you to do this morning, amen, as uh, we think about the whole issue of reconciliation or the issue of trying to deal with uh, reconciling anger, pain, and all these other things that have happened to us, I want you to think with me on the subject. Put Jesus in the middle. He's already told you that where there are two or three gathered in my name, I'm there among you. And I want to ask you a question this morning, a personal question. Pearl, let me ask a personal question. You been have any has anyone ever done you wrong that has not been resolved yet? Do you want to resolve that personal animosity or animosities with a goal? reconciliation. Maybe you don't want to be reconciled. But no matter what you may think, the responsibility for the reconciliation, if you are the offended, notice what I said. If you are the offended, the responsibility for reconciliation is on you. Not the one who did you wrong. It's on you. Amen. So the question I want to lay before you this morning is that you have to stop your offenders to resolve your hurts. Jesus teaches us how to resolve animosities and conflicts and take back our lives from the injury and the pain that we have suffered from the offender. In the text, Jesus says, if two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. So who are these two or three in the conflict? He says two or three. You're number one. You're the first one. You are the offended. That's the person who's been hurt. You are the one who has suffered the injury, the pain whether it's physical or mental hurt. God starts with you because in order for there be to be healing in a relationship, the person who has been offended has to be willing to move past their hurt to their healing. You can't have reconciliation as long as you're angry and living out of your pain. An apology or a confession of wrong will not begin healing if you are still holding on to the pain. It is more than smoothing things over. Some folk want to come and try to apologize or get things right to smooth it over. It's more than going alone to get alone. Your healing begins when you being willing to acknowledge your pain, go and do something about it. The second person in these two or three is the offender. What is important to note in the text is that the offender is a member of the church. I can't find nobody in black America who either hasn't been or is not or doesn't claim to be a Christian. So this presupposes that they are Christians, your offender. And if this is the case, then they have the presence and love of Jesus are supposed to have in them. So the two of you share a common faith in Christ. And if you and your offender are Christians, you cannot live forever in hostility. The love of Christ won't allow you 
Church hurt. Yeah, y'all, I think about this church hurt. Boy, that church hurt is a powerful thing. Some of us have been holding something against each other forever. And, if, and it only makes it difficult to worship God, but it also interferes with our own health and well-being. We can't even walk into the presence of God knowing that that person that we have something against is there. I watch people that get divorces. They quit going to church. I watch people that fall out or have differences with each other. Either one of them or both of them quit the church. So it not only makes it difficult, but I want to let you know something. You can't run away from and deny it and be happy and serve God. The third person in this trilogy, he says two or three gathered together. Y'all didn't know this is what he was talking about, did you? I had this wrong myself. I used to think it was if it was a small group of church folks having church, that if it was just two or three, he would be there. Yeah, he'll be there. But this is also talking about offenders, offenders, and people that's going to try to help you get it right. All them folks that's out there throwing gasoline on your your feuds need to be trying to help you work it out. First thing we do, we run to somebody and start telling them our side of the story so that we can try to get some support. But the third person is Jesus. Jesus is not on either side. Let me say that again to you. Jesus is not on either side. Jesus is in the middle. Jesus is the referee. He is the rules interpreter and the enforcer. He is the one who will bring you to the table and try to make healing possible. You cannot be whole if part of you is broken. Is it not time to make whole that pain that you've been carrying for all these years? Let me speak to my, for myself. Is it time to move from brokenness to reconciliation. Jesus said, you, the offended, go and point out the fault to the offender. You've been thinking about that thing all your life. You've been worrying about that thing all these years. You alone are supposed to think you can give you confidentiality. But Jesus says, you take yourself and you go with and find that person and you and them first meet alone. And why would he say do it alone? He says do it alone because he wants you to keep that thing confidential. Yeah, yeah. He don't want you going and telling everybody around the city what happened or who said what or who shot John because that's just going to make it worse. And then chances are, though, that even though you have tried to point out the fault, you've tried to be Christ-like, Chances are that the devil is still in one of you. You and I know in this day of anger and conflict that people do not like to admit guilt or take responsibility for doing harm. I see the president. I was watching this special last night on the pandemic and the president. He says, I don't take responsibility. So they will escalate when you go and try to work things out. So Jesus says that after going along with Christ in you, the only reason you will do this is because of the Christ in you, having encountered recalcitrance. Go back and take one or two others with you. Now, if that was me in the flesh, I said in the flesh, I would not have gone in the first place. I'm going to admit that because Many of us, like I like President Trump, I don't like to admit fault or guilt. But I know that wouldn't do any good. And so why would I put myself through that again? But Jesus is in the midst of it. Jesus wants you to regain your brother or sister. He wants shalom among you. You have to go back. And the purpose of the witnesses or the witness is not to verify who was right or wrong. I went back and looked at that again. 
What the purpose of the witness is, is to observe the dynamics of what's going on between the two of you. And what the Bible says, when they see which one of you is acting a fool, they can help correct that. So when they see the evidence, they can then help to facilitate communication. So the purpose of the witnesses is to keep things calm among you. They're not there to take sides. They're there to be impartial referees. They represent Jesus and his will. You don't want to become part of it. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus if you happen to be a person asked to go and be a witness. If you trust the Jesus in the witnesses, then you can trust that they will help you to maintain control and hold your offender accountable. Two persons acting like fools cannot make sense. Let me say that again. Two people acting like fools will not make sense. But they may still be able to listen. So at this point, you frustrated. You went and talked. You took witnesses. Is it time to give up? You feel that this fool doesn't want to make things right. Are you sure you do as well? The Jesus in you says that it's time to take it to the church. Uh-oh. Now, 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 wait a minute. I, I asked this question. Why should I take my business to the church? I don't like everybody in church knowing my business because, you know, church folk like to gossip. <laughs> might be better for me to sue. Or maybe better to get a restraining order or a peace bond. But wait, not yet. Your last resort is the church, according to Jesus. And that's if you are in the same congregation. Now, maybe the congregation can help. Now, let me tell you what I thought about it. I looked at this. Here's how the congregation can help. The congregation can help because Jesus says that the church has the power to bind. Binding is the act of making sure that something is done. Maybe it's not a matter of them seeing who's right or wrong or hard or soft. Maybe it's a matter for prayer. So when you take it to the church, you're not taking it to the church for them to get involved. You take it to the church because there's supposed to be some prayer warriors in the church. And the prayer warriors in the church are being appealed to to pray about you and your offender. Oh, when the church prays, y'all. I remember in the New Testament when the church started praying, God broke loose the, 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 the walls and, 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 and the cells of the jails and let Peter out of jail when the church prayed. And if you think that God can break cell doors and walls and send an angel for somebody in jail, what do you think he can do for you with you and your offender? God has given the church the power to bind. I think today we don't have enough binding churches. You got to bind folk to the will of God. You got to bind folk in prayer. You got to bind these conflicts. You got to bind these things so that God binds them in heaven. Y'all come on now. Come on now. Come on. Because see, when heaven gets busy, something on earth has got to change. I'm going to bind these crazy folk. I'm going to bind this conflict, going to bind this hatred, going to bind this anger, going to bind these folk that's taking advantage, going to bind the pain and hurt and sorrow. Bind it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you got to lose something. You got to lose something that's powerful and good. And Jesus says, whatever you bind on earth and loose on earth shall be bound and loosed in heaven. I'm backed. You're backed. You're not out there by yourself. You don't have to fear any more offenders. You don't have to worry about any pain anymore because Jesus has your back. And then I've always wondered, and I'm through, y'all, what did Jesus mean when he says if the offender 
refuses to listen even to the church, let such a person be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Some of y'all like to hear that. And the reason you like to hear that is because when you get mad and somebody's hurt you, you want to go and sit in a corner and throw rocks at them. You want to go into your own pity party. You want to think that you are so right and they're so wrong. But Jesus is not recommending rejection or isolation. Jesus is saying that you are free to live in freedom from pain. You try to take comfort in knowing that you're not holding a grudge. It's all right to leave them alone, but you can't leave them alone because you got a grudge. Oh, y'all quiet on them radio. I can hear y'all being quiet out there this morning on them TV shows. But Jesus is saying, I want you to remember something. When he said Gentiles... Jesus loved Gentiles. Jesus loved tax collectors. And remember that he never gave up on them. If it didn't work, keep on praying for them. Keep on loving them. Jesus is saying that you may have to go and be by yourself without reconciliation, but you don't have to go carrying a grudge. But you free. You did all you could. And God, because you did all you could, you and God are all right. And sometimes you got to let that person that doesn't want to reconcile with you, you got to let them go back to God because Jesus said you did all you could. And now just turn them over to me. Oh, they know you tried. They know you humbled yourself. They know who was willing to do so much. God says, you're released, you're free. Go on with your life. Don't waste any more time in regret or pain. Go on and live. Oh, my God, this morning, God is telling me that I don't have to go around and carry that church hurt no more. I don't have to carry that relationship pain. I don't have to worry about the fact that maybe I had to do some things that the law required, but I'm free because I went and I said, I want to reconcile with you, and you decided not to do it. Tell the enemy that he can't use what he did to you in the past or is doing right now to torment you. I want to I want to just make a suggestion to you. Now, I, I conclude. Take control of your conflicts and move it out of the way. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus says, I'm there among you. You have the power. You can do it. Encourage yourself. You don't need nobody else to encourage you. You don't need to be encouraged by the fact that somebody who was unwilling rejected you. Encourage yourself. You don't need an army. You don't need a crowd. Jesus says, where there are two or three gathered together. I know your offender is not with you, but they still gathered in the presence of God. I know that you don't feel totally healed and you're not until you could be reconciled, but God has released you. Tell the devil, I'm free. I'm free. (laughs) I did all I could. And the Lord said, well done. Good and faithful, sir. (laughs) Y'all, come on, let's go to this table. Let's go to this table. Let's get ready to go to God's table. We're gonna, we're going to uh, go ahead. I see uh, we got to go to Psalms 51, and uh, we got to pray our prayer of confession. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, Psalms 51. Amen. Uh, we're gonna pray together. If you have your Bibles or wherever you are, if you would, if you would join me as we together pray our prayer of confession. You can pray to come to God's table. Have mercy on me, O God, 
according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from me, my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you justified in your sentence and blameless when you passed judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit in me. Amen. Now we're going to go over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to share. I will read aloud and you just read silently. We're going to share our words of uh, consecration. Psalm, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23 through 26. And these are the words of Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat, as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. might note and as you have your bread there at home the body of Jesus Christ that power that enables me to go to my enemy or my offender and to point out their faults was broken for you and for me and then the blood of Jesus Christ it was shed for you and for me and may the sacrifice cleanse and sustain us as we will go along our life's journey. take your bread and would you eat? Would you take your bread and would you eat? And then would you take the cup and would you drink? And may the grace of God be with you now and forevermore. Taff is going to close us out and I'm going to give the benediction. Our Father, we thank you now for reconciliation that begins with conciliation. And Lord, we pray now that the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit the rest abide and keep us now and until we meet again.
Wasp, <laughs>